Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking Julie and Julia. This has been such a fun movie to deep dive. I've enjoyed going scene by scene, talking behind the scenes stuff, really going deep into this movie. It's been a lot of fun, so check out the other episodes in case you haven't seen them. But let's pick up on episode 5 of Julie and Julia. So we pick up with Julie Powell, and she's cooking for Judith Jones. So it's the infamous beef bourguignon scene. We're going to talk all about that and what really happened and what all went down. And yeah, I'm super excited to talk about this one. It's one of my favorite scenes of the movie. So let's jump in. Also, I'm so sorry my voice sounds like this. I'm not sick. I just have these stupid allergies. And every spring, this is what my voice does. So, so sorry. Let's get into this. I'm interrupting for two seconds to let you now know I am now on ko-fi-coffee.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. I'm collecting toward a new microphone and sound system. I never remember what all that crap is called, but I priced it out. I'm trying to collect toward that. If that's something you're interested in giving toward, that's where you can do it. I really appreciate all those who have donated. I'm blown away by your generosity. And I just, I really want to grow this channel. I want to sound better. I want to be more professional with my equipment. And this is the way to help me do that. So check it out, ko-fi.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. Okay, so we're back to the beef bourguignon scene. So... The idea is Julie Powell is cooking for Judith Jones. Judith Jones is the editor we see that helps Julia Child get published. She's the one that's doing the naming of the book with her in that scene. And she had learned about Julie Powell and wanted to find out what a blog was and how it all came together and was planning to go to dinner. So this really did happen where Julie Powell had decided to make the beef bourguignon the night before she accidentally overslept and the, it all burnt. So she ended up having to recook the entire meal. Well, the film shows Judith Jones backs out because of bad weather, but here's what actually happened. So Julia Child was not, we haven't really gone into this, but Julia Child unfortunately never met Julie Powell. They, she was not a fan of Julie Powell. She was not, she tried to read a little bit of the blog, but did not appreciate that Julie kept using four letter words. And to quote Julia Child, she just didn't take it all so seriously. Like she, she didn't feel like, she felt like Julie was doing this as a publicity stunt more than a learning experience. So once Judith found out about that, she ended up canceling. She said because she didn't think Julie was a serious cook. It was these four letter words and it's not how you describe food if you care and if you're a good writer. Ouch. <laughs> Julia thought that um, they shouldn't have anything to do with it and that's what caused Judith to back out. So to make it all even worse, to add the cherry on top, Eric and Julie get into this huge fight. And he's pointing out that she's this endeavor has taken over their lives. And he says, what's going to happen when you're no longer the center of everything? So she seems to have lost her way and had all these meltdowns and, and taken it all too seriously and made herself the center of everything. And he's starting to resent her for it. Meanwhile, we see Julia Child. She's packing up the kitchen. It's a sad time because she and Paul, they have to love, they have to leave Paris. We find out they're going to Marseille. Um, I'm never going to say that right. Is it Marseille? They're, they're leaving. <laughs> and she's having a hard time pretending to be anything but devastated. So we see photos of Paul and Julia. This was a real photo shoot that the real Paul and Julia Child did. It was so cute they were really into showing their love like I mentioned before they were very physical with each other they like to send out these silly postcards and do things like this they kind of speed up time during this montage they ended up moving on to Germany they had no chance to meet their deadline talking about Julia and um, the the book that they're working on and it would be two more years before they complete it Paul had been called into Washington. They had no idea why. Julia kept thinking that they were going to promote Paul and possibly 
send them back to Paris. But unfortunately, that's not what happens. We'll get into that. Julia goes to meet with Simone and talk about the hours that they're putting in and how Lucette is not pulling her weight. So again, this was a contention behind the scenes because many of Lucette's um, family and friends have come out and said, no, 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 that's not what happened. She was helping, but that she was going through a bankruptcy, a painful divorce at the time. So she just was not able to do quite as much, but she was still trying to help as much as she could. So it turns out Paul is not getting the raise that they thought, and they were not moving back to Paris. They thought it was a promotion, but it turns out he's being investigated. They put him in a windowless room. They asked him about their patriotism. They even asked him if he was a homosexual. He says he came out Uh, He came home exonerated but bruised. So that was tough, spending all those years working for the government, only to be questioned about his patriotism. So on top of all that, (laughs) Julie's not doing much better. Um, So not only did Judith Jones cancel, she had a horrible fight. She wrote it out in a blog. She ended up deleting it. She had to apologize in her blog to her husband She'd made this amazing dinner. Of course, it went to waste. She made a raspberry cream, I think it was a Bavarian, that she had taken to the office, but on the way, that breaks. She gets called into her boss's office, and he knew why she took the day off the day before, that she had burnt the stew, and that's the reason, because she put it in her blog. She says, no, 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 she had stomach flu. That's why she stayed in bed, and of course he saw right through her and said, anyone else would fire you, this is your last chance. She already hated this job. It's just a real struggle. So Julie ends up writing about marrying a really nice guy and that she didn't deserve him, and sometimes that she acts you know, terrible to him and puts it in a blog. He ends up reading it, and... She calls him, he's sleeping at his, um, at his work, basically, because he's just too mad to come home. Her mom calls, and it's interesting because at first her mom had said, what are you doing, why are you wasting your time with this? But this time we see her mom encouraging her, saying, you can't quit, you've come this far. Okay, so here's an interesting behind-the-scenes fact about this scene. As she's walking home, there's very loud music playing, and it's saying, stop the train, and <laughs> the person singing it is Henry Wolf. His real name is Henry Gummer, who is Meryl Streep's real son. They ended up using his track in this scene, which was pretty cool. I love learning that information. Okay, back to Julia. So, Avis is coming, and this is where we find out she's never actually met Avis. They are pen pals. They've been pen pals for years. Avis's husband is a writer, and he wrote about knives, and so she reached out to Avis, and they became pen pals, and they have been talking for eight years. They meet, they hug. Avis is played by Deborah Rush. She's from You've Got Mail. She's from Big Business. She's from She Devil. She's been a lot of stuff. So things aren't going much better for Julia right now either. So she's meeting with her publishers, and they aren't on the same page with Julia. She is at, um, she's trying to push for volumes of this books and the publishers don't want that. They want an easy French cookbook for American women, but they want it smaller. They, they saw it as much smaller project. So we switch back and forth between Julia and Julie quite a bit here. We see them both working their way through recipes and, Um, Julie's taking in acid. She's struggling to get through some of these recipes. They are making and eating cakes. Julia and Paul are packing up and we see her packing up her book. She's sending it off and they're celebrating with a bottle of wine. So then we see Julie. She's cleaning frantically. We find out Amanda from the New York Times is coming and she's going to be serving a pork dish. She's taking pictures of the food. She doesn't know if Julia reads her stuff or not, but she's hoping so, which makes it so... I remember finding out that Julia wasn't into Julie's work, and it kind of made me sad to hear that, because 
you know, say what you want either way about Julie, but she seemed to really love Julia Child. And that would be heartbreaking if the one, you know, if somebody you really looked up to and, and worked so hard on working through the recipes and just to find out that Julia's just not a fan. But because of serving Amanda from the New York Times, she was able to get an article in the paper and she's starting to get more exposure. That night when she came home, she had 65 messages of people asking if she was interested in writing a book. And she tells Eric she's going to be a writer. He reminds her, you are a writer. But then it's here that you kind of get heartbroken all over again because this is a scene where Julie gets a call and she finds out it's they're asking for a comment from her because Julia Child had said that she just wasn't a fan of Julie Powell. And so she, of course, got sad. She says, no comment. Thank you for calling and tells Eric, Julia hates me. So I'm starting to sound crazy again. My voice is going out. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Hopefully I'll be back very soon. <laughs> Sounding much better, but I'm so enjoying this deep dive of this movie. It's been so much fun. I love learning the behind the scenes stuff. I just thought it was cool, like to learn Meryl's son was was the one playing that song in the background and yeah, stuff like that, and what really happened with the burnt beef bourguignon and and those kind of things. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye bye.